Here's a question. Am I walking forward or am I walking backward? This may sound like a silly question and one you obviously know the answer to, but without your conscious awareness, your eyes, along with your brain, are making dozens of instantaneous calculations to determine where I'm headed. This is depth perception. The ability to judge how far objects are away from you, the ability to see the world in 3D as opposed to a 2D flat surface. In this video, we're gonna talk about all the depth cues we use to make sense of the world around us. Now in psychology, depth perception is typically divided into two types of cues. What we call monocular cues, ocular meaning eye or vision and mono meaning one, so we're able to judge depth and distance only using one eye. And also binocular cues, ocular once again meaning eye or vision and bi meaning two. So we're able to judge depth and distance using both eyes. Let's start with monocular cues. Now the first monocular cue is called linear perspective. And this is the idea that when you have two parallel lines, like the railroad tracks behind me, the further you go in the distance, the more these lines tend to converge into a single point. This point is often called the vanishing point. And you can see linear perspective on sidewalks and in streets. And it lets your brain know that something is getting farther and farther away. The next monocular cue is called relative size. And this is the basic idea that when you have multiple objects that are relatively the same size, like these blue flower pots, the ones that cast a smaller image on your eye, specifically your retina, are going to be perceived as farther away. And the ones that cast a larger image on your retina, like this one, is going to be perceived as closer. Now, you might just assume that the ones behind me are actually getting smaller or shrinking, and that's not too silly of an idea. But because I know the size tends to remain constant, I know they're just getting farther and farther away. Another monocular cue is called texture gradient, and I want you to focus on the word texture. This is the idea that when you see an object up close, you're able to see texture and find details. And as you get farther and farther away, those details tend to disappear. Here's a really nice example. All the bricks in front of me are extremely detailed, right? You can see all the lines, little leaves, little blemishes and colors within each brick. But as I pan out, you'll notice that all of those little details tend to disappear. And eventually, it almost becomes one smooth surface, telling my brain we're getting farther and farther away. One monocular cue artists love to use in their drawings and paintings is light and shadow. And artists use shadows to help the viewer know where the light source is coming from, which in turn helps us know how far an object is away from us and even how big an object is. In this example, the way that light hits the basketball and the shadow it creates provides some clues to the brain about its dimensions and depth. And in this shot, the separation between the basketball and a shadow helps me perceive that the ball is off the ground and in motion. Which object is closer to you, the tree or the car? This might sound like a trick question, but it's actually a monocular cue known as interposition or overlap. And this is the idea that when one object blocks another, in this case, the tree is blocking the car, the one that is being blocked is farther away. The tree, of course, is going to be closer. Looking at these two garbage cans, we can actually see two monocular cues. Interposition, I know the one on the right is closer because it's partially blocking the one in the back, and also light and shadow. Because the shadow's on the left, I know the light source is coming from above and to the right. Just like light and shadow, this cue is also frequently used by artists in their drawings to depict depth. This is aerial perspective. And rather than using the size of object to see how far something away is, this focuses on color. I'm currently at the beach, and as you can see, the cliffs extend for miles. And as your eyes follow the cliffs into the water, take notice that they become less detailed, blurrier, and lighter in color, almost blending into the blue sky background. This is aerial perspective. The last monocular cue actually involves motion, which is why I'm driving my car. And this is by far one of my favorite ones because we know it, we've seen it, we just never put a name to it. And it's called motion parallax or relative motion. And it's the basic idea that things that are far away when you're in motion appear to be moving at a different speed than things that are close up. If you fixate on the median dividing the highways, it looks like it's going extremely fast, right? But then when you fixate on the trees in the background, it looks like it's going relatively slow. This is a phenomenon known as motion parallax.
So now that we've covered monocular cues, judging depth and distance only using one eye, let's focus on binocular cues, understanding depth perception using both eyes. And there's two we're going to focus on. The first binocular cue is called convergence. And this is the idea that as you get closer and closer to an object, your eyes begin to converge or get closer together, almost getting cross-eyed, signaling to your brain this object is really close. As you get farther and farther away from an object, your eyes begin to spread apart, signaling to your brain something's getting farther away. You can actually feel convergence. Notice as they get closer and closer to the stop sign, both eyes begin to come together, feeling a little strained. And as they move away, both eyes begin to move apart, signaling to your brain we're getting farther and farther away. The last binocular cue is known as retinal disparity. Retinal, for retina, that's the back of your eye where light converts into electrical signals, and disparity means difference. So retinal disparity is the idea that each eye sees a different angle of an object, your brain combines those images together to create a clearer picture of the world. Your left eye is most likely seeing this image, your right eye is most likely seeing this image, and when you combine them together using retinal disparity, you get a clear picture of the world. To recap, our eyes along with our brain have evolved to detect dozens of cues to process depth perception. From monocular cues, like linear perspective, texture gradient, and relative size, to binocular cues, which is critical to seeing the world in 3D, like convergence and retinal disparity.